Hi, I'm Super Gary Harefield. Welcome to Warrior Body, Buddha Mind. This is the first DVD series on the burning palm system or the four jump. Four means fire palm in Cantonese, not burning palm, but uh, Grandmaster Du Wei like to use that term burning rather than fire because a lot of people would mistake in that as fi uh, lighting fires with uh, the energy in the body, which is incorrect for this system. The burning palm uh, goes back thousands of years according to Grandmaster Du Wei and it was housed in places like Tibet, the Taoist mountains of Normae, as well as Shaolin Temple. Now, Fong Da Duk, the founder of the White Tiger System, travelled throughout China gathering this special technique and uh, now it's been handed down into the Du family and I'm left in charge to pushing this system out to the public and this is an honour for me and this will be the first time it will be released in its entirety and the system is uh, based on three different stages of learning there's a spiritual path there's also your know, combat and fighting path as well uh, the most important part of the uh, burning palm is the healing this DVD will be based on the fighting aspects and in the beginning uh, of learning the burning palm, you have to strengthen the body. Okay, so a strong body will produce strong chi and a strong mind. Then you also learn uh, the spiritual part and uh, later you'll be learning the healing part. So I'm going to be pushing out first the most important part for self-defense, which is the burning palm combat system. The burning palm was found by Fundaduk to be in an area in uh, the Normae region of China on the outskirts by a nomadic tribe. I do not know the name of this tribe, I wish I could, but it's going back a long time, so uh, that's been lost in uh, translation and oral tradition. But according to Grandmaster Du Wei, it was all housed in this little remote village where Fundaduk travelled and uh, uh, met these type of nomadic people. They had a spiritual path, and this is um, the more, a more, what we call the morning practice. We have uh, a morning, uh, midday, and night. And when we talk about spiritual, we're talking about thousands of years when the dawn of man, people worshipped the sun, the moon, and the universe, the stars, as well as the earth, as the uh, mother earth, yeah? Now, if you go back in all traditions of, and, and religions, the, the sun deity and the moon is found in almost every religion today and it's changed its name or names of the gods. Okay, so uh, the burning palm is very deep and uh, I'd like you to also research on some of the information I'm going to be releasing because uh, maybe you may know it a little bit different. and. Uh, to bring light to this beautiful old system it would be awesome uh, for other people to be researching as much as I do. I found a lot of uh, esoteric knowledge from all different mystery schools hidden within just the, the methods contained inside the burning palm. So the first DVD series is going to be on the conditioning of the hands, the whole body and uh, I hope uh, you enjoy this DVD. Okay, first things about uh, conditioning the hands, you'll need a good supply of Tita Jiao. The burning palm Tita Jiao would be better to use because you're keeping it all within the same system. Of course, you can try other people's uh, Tita liniment, or if you have your own already, uh, up to you. I like to keep everything within the same training, although I do different type of systems as well. But <clears throat> excuse me, with the burning palm training, try and uh, keep the same uh, medicine uh, for this uh, system. The bag itself, uh, you'll be, I'll be showing how to make a bag from scratch. I myself rather build my own material, which of course is, that's how things were done back in the day. You'd, have, you'd learn how to make it, understand 
uh, the different uh, density of the bag. Now, each bag or each level in this system uh, was designed to replicate the human anatomy. So the first level, you're going to be learning about the anatomy on the, 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 the muscle and the, the skin. Now, some people are fatter than others, so there's got a lot of skin, and to penetrate that to get through the muscle <coughs> is uh, a different... Uh, different power, you know, there's so much in it that you need to understand. But that each bag, the first bag you're going to be learning is uh, sand and cotton. And I'm going to be showing you uh, from the beginning how to create your own bag, what material you'll need. And then after that I'll be showing you the strikes, which we call the five shadows. Those five techniques on the bag will condition the whole hand. And while you're conditioning, we'll be understanding what we call the Song Tan Gen, the loose springy power to release that onto the bag. Now, when doing the, the strikes on the bag, because we're understanding that that bag is supposed to replicate a body, that we need to know the thickness of skin. So when, we, when we're making the bag, it will be up to you how much sand that you're going to put in and how much cotton around it you're going to use. I, for a beginner, I'm going to make a beginner's bag and I'm going to make it where you're going to have to penetrate the, the tissue to get into the muscle, yeah? So uh, the most important thing of making this bag is that you're understanding the anatomy of the body. It's not a punching bag that you can get anywhere and just start whacking away. Understand that has a two-fold process. One is striking and finding a depth to reach into that bag. And another thing is when you're doing your healing and your massage, again, that same bag could be used to understand that getting through the, uh, the skin and, and, and getting deep into the muscle. Okay, so the bag is used not just for just punching away. You can buy a bag anywhere, but in the burning palm system, each level contains a different material and that's what makes this system absolutely beautiful and you'll never see it anywhere else like that. Now, because the bags are hanging, all the different uh, devices we use are all hanging bags, all right? <coughs> so we're not going to the traditional where you see the, the people doing iron palm on a flat bench. Now we're getting more into a fighting aspect with a hanging bag and that's more realistic for combative uses. Also uses your stance to move around the bag. The bag is moving to and fro, and you need to learn your timing, your, your structure properly. Everything is involved when you've got a hanging bag. Boxing, Western boxing, Chinese boxing, you know, this is where it's a step further than iron palm, okay? You're gonna get a strong iron palm anyway from doing the conditioning. But the burning palm now is working on uh, getting deeper into the bag and understanding a different material because we want to learn about the human anatomy. It's not just smashing your hands on, uh, you know, uh, rice, ball bearings and stuff like that for no purpose. There's a purpose for every uh, level in the Song Tan Ging and uh, you're going to be surprised as we get further and deeper into this system it's absolutely amazing. I can't get enough of it. To me, it's, it's special because each level contains a certain way of training. And, and like I said, it's very esoteric and you won't find this anywhere else. And uh, I want you to actually understand the beauty and everything else that goes with this system. It's an absolute awesome system. Song Tan Ging, level one, uh, is called the Five Shadows. Now, according to Grandmaster Du Wei and the, and the knowledge that's involved, these five shadows isn't just five hand techniques. Five shadows means five different shades of blood that when you hit someone, you leave a bruise, and also when you're doing your healing, when you leave that palm mark on the person, will come up the five different uh, shades of uh, the colours of the blood, and that will determine 
how sick a person is, how toxic they are uh, along the meridians and the body, or you know, the organs, yeah? Now, these five shadows uh, can be seen in many different uh, southern style systems, such as Batme, Yaogumun, uh, Bakfupai, of course, uh, Wing Chun, yeah, so, uh, but these five is all you really need. If you actually understand these five shadows and understand how to uh, mix them and make a Rubens cube of techniques, it has every, all the elements, all the different uh, gates are covered and every, uh, every strike of the five shadow contains a different way of releasing that force, okay, or the gig. Okay, so there's a lot of understanding in just five movements. Some styles such as Sing Yi has the five elements as well. And they are also known as uh, an awesome fighting and powerful system. So just five techniques is all you need to learn for this level, for the hands, and then we'll be going on with the kicks and all that a little bit later. Okay, so let's get started and we'll start making the bag. Okay, we're going to now uh, commence the making of the first level Song Tang Ging burning palm bag. I've got my little man beside me, my main man, Hayden. And uh, there's a few things you need to get uh, before you even start commencing the bag. First thing is a bucket of sand. And you want your sand to be clean at least. It doesn't really matter because uh, it's going to be inside something anyway. But I use beach sand and uh, some sand is a bit more finer than the other sand. This one here is really fine so it actually compacts very well together. Um, and you'll notice if, if you hang your bag outdoors, with the rain and the sun and all that, it will get so, it will be like a little brick. Okay, so it's something to remember when you're making your own bag. A, an old pillowcase to put the sand in, and a, a, a few towels uh, big enough to wrap around it, and I'll, I'll show you why. Uh, plaster tape, I use plaster tape rather than electrical tape because it's got a little bit of flexibility and when I'm tightening the bag, uh, uh, when I'm wrapping it, it actually starts to condense and form a better shape. And lastly, a, a posties bag or a, a linen bag. I'm lucky enough to work in a hospital, therefore I can get myself some um, linen bags. So what we'll do is we'll start, oh and a pair of scissors of course, and uh, I'll get Hayden to help me here. You grab the, uh, the pillowcase for me. Straight. Yeah, we've got to open it, yeah? Okay. All right, you hold that open for me. Nice and tight, like that. And uh, you may spill some. Now when you, remember I said uh, previously, depending on how big you want the bag uh, and how much sand to use. As you uh, progress in your level one, you may make two or three bags. In the beginning, I advise you to put less sand and more cotton, which is a towel, yeah? And um, that that way when you're hitting the bag, because you're going to be doing everything 108 reps, so each hand strike that you use will be 108 strikes each hand, and over time it will get sore. But what you want to do is make it where it's not going to be so hard in the beginning, and then you can make another bag maybe in three months time, and put more sand and take and put less uh, towels around it, yeah? So this is a basic one I'm going to do. I'm just going to pour the sand in. Right, how much we got in there, you reckon? Okay, it's probably a little bit too small. We'll keep going. Can you hold that again for me? You hold 
Um, three quarters of a bucket just in there so you can get an idea of the size of when you roll it into a ball okay you want to <coughs> excuse me you depending on as you get better uh, with your striking you may make smaller balls yeah it's because the big ball you're going to get a bigger surface area so your focus and your technique will be a lot sharper in the beginning but once you start going to a smaller ball you're pinpointing it's like doing the dim max strikes you know you've got only a small area and you want to be able to hit perfectly in the center of uh, the smaller ones as well so we'll make a big one Just use the whole bucket of sand for this. What you want to do is just form it into a try to try your best to make it into a, a sphere shape, and you're going to just tie it up like this, just by twirling and twisting, like so. Yeah. Now, uh, hold that for me, mate. Now, that doesn't look good, yeah? Right and what you want to do is just start twisting, I mean, um, taping this part of it down the bottom. that off and you'll see already we got the shape starting to form of a ball. It doesn't have to be a, a precise ball but I'll show you, I'll tell you why in a minute. But after you've made it into the shape like that I'm going to cut the remaining of this off of the pillow slip. You want to get yourself some decent scissors as well. All right, so we've made that, and you see, it's just this little end here. What we're going to do now is we're just going to place it like that. And Hayden's going to hold this for Daddy, like that. Good boy. I actually move around so the boys can see it. Isn't it? start forming the ball or thereabouts yeah it's never going to be perfect but the whole idea is that you've got something as round as you can these days uh, a lot of mixed martial arts schools and boxing schools use the teardrop design for their um, bags hanging bags and uh, it's been now in the burning palm system for thousands of years. So, must be worth something, yeah? So you just go around the bag. Sometimes you will hit that little knot that's in, uh, that we've tied in the beginning. But hey, it's all part of conditioning, right? See where it is there, that little hard spot? You may hit that and it will hurt but you get used to it all 
And the dog is also in the DVD, aren't she? He's a burning palm dog. He loves being in the movies, doesn't he, Hattie? Yeah. Okay. okay, so now you see that. See, feel that. Heavy. Okay, so now we've got the, the center of the, the bag. Okay, so this will get hard, like I said, over time if it's out in the rain. And then when the sun dries it, it's going to be like a brick. Okay, so there you go. You've got yourself the center of your hanging bag. Then you're going to get yourself some towels, old towels. I'm going to put that, put that over here, if you can. Oh. It's like a dead head, isn't it? Yeah. All right, and then we're going to wrap the towel around it. Okay, so this is the cotton. This is what we call the skin. Um, and the muscle is the actual sand, yeah? Like so. We'll put this up here. Now, again, there's going to be lumps and bumps, but it's okay. Because it's all about the conditioning. And on the, on the human body, you've got parts that protrude, bones that protrude, muscles, the whole lot. So it doesn't matter. We'll do that in a sec. Thanks, doggy. Can I have one more? <laughs> Hold that for us. Make it straight. Okay. And we're going to do it again. Now, if you want, you can actually uh, tape this up um, before you put another towel over it. You don't really have to, but it's up to you if you want to be pedantic about it. But we'll do that again. And then we'll roll like this. Like so. Like that. And Like this, like that. Yeah, we'll get some. Uh, hold that like that. Just put your seed from there. It's okay. I'll get that part in a minute. Do your best. I'm just doing it nice and quick for you, but you get the idea, and you, you may find a better way to make it. Remember, at the end of the day, you're going to be making more than one bag. I guarantee. <clears throat> and this is a lot of fun because you, when you're training, you, you want to be able to make your own equipment. You, you feel like you're, you're getting more out of it rather than just buying something. And uh, one day, if you ever teach, you'll be able to pass this on to the students. Now this is start this will start to get heavy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right, heavy enough. Yeah. Alright. So you feel there's the cotton 
has a bit of sponginess and you want to be able to get through that into the actual sand. <clears throat> so when you start feeling it, you feel there's some softness and as time goes on this will get harder as well because the sand and everything will start to settle depending on how, how you um, hang the bag. Then we'll put it into this. You want to pick that up? We'll roll it in. Good boy. Very good and strong. Yeah, get the tape, mate. Again, twist so this is nice and tight and you can lock it with your knees. Okay, can you reckon you can hold that nice and tight and don't let go and let it spring around? And from the bottom, pull it tight up, pull it up, yeah, good boy. Make it tight as you can down the bottom and then pulling it and working your way up where the twist is, uh, it's twisted so it won't untwist once the tape's on. Now you've got yourself a hanging bag and then this will be tied up over a beam and if the string isn't long enough what you do is you get yourself some uh, cord or something from the hardware shop, tie it around, noose it and then you can still hang it up. This um, part here that's loose if you want to, again you can tape it up, that's totally up to you. Um, I just leave it how it is because over time it's going to wear out and I don't care. <laughs> right? So I want to be able to um, make a new one and making a new one means that my hands get in more condition, I can take less, I can use less towels and make them a lot smaller. <coughs> Oops, sorry. So, um, so that's the uh, Burning Palm Level 1 bag, sand and cotton, very simple to make, very cheap and uh, good luck with making it. Any questions you can email me at burningpalmsystem uh, at gmail.com. Alright, so thank you. Thank you. Okay, before we learn any of the uh, bag training or any of the fighting uh, techniques, there's a few things you need to know regarding your stances and the body postures. Okay, the first one that you need to understand is called the uh, 
uh, something which is the three uh, three point theory of the system, which is your nose, your knee, and your toes are in alignment. Now, when you're in a fighting stance, which is like a, a front stance here, yeah, like this, with the toes uh, on the toes at the back, just like a boxer, with the front foot on a slope 45 to protect your centre line. Um, when you're when you're actually standing and, and you're on guard and you're ready to do your bag training and stuff like that, you do not want to lean over the knee nor the toes. Okay, if you go past that, you're going to get off balance. Someone that's very good with the soft sound technique uh, or any uh, grappler will find that center and take it. So what you want to do is keep mindful of, uh, of this while you're training. Of course, when you're doing stuff, you will sometimes, you may overextend on a few things, but always be mindful and go back to, okay, let's go back to the theories and what they really mean. You don't want to be leaning back like this. Some styles uh, kind of have a straight back and lean back. Therefore, you're not committed uh, to your strike. If you actually uh, keep this in line, the nose, knee and toe, and when you punch, you've committed yourself by extending, but not past the toe, yeah? So, when you're, um, when you do your strikes, don't over, don't let the elbow go past the knee, keep the elbow as, as well in line with the toes and the knee. Yeah? Okay? If, and when you round the back, your, your uh, nose, knee, and toe will be in line. That's also part of the centerline theory. And um, we'll get into that a little bit later because I've got some answers, uh, got some questions I want to answer for some of the guys that have uh, contacted me, students and uh, people that are just uh, generally interested in burning palm. So the first thing is, when you stand in your, your front stance or the full bolt, the tiger stance, okay, that um, your nose, knee, and toe are in your center, yeah, at all times. So that's the first thing of the understanding of the uh, Sam Dim. Okay, so that Sam Dim breakdown is as uh, straightforward as I can possibly be. Don't overextend past your knee. Someone will off balance you. Do not lean back like this when you fight. Try and keep your body centered. The nose, knee and toe always facing your opponent like that, yeah? So that's Sam Dimpa, the uh, three point method of just understanding your center line and holding your base. has three body postures basically like most martial arts or should be in all martial arts anyway the Sam Yun Fa Sam Yun is the three circles yeah of the body or the three shapes now when you're in just say if I'm facing you this way my shoulders are uh, parallel to each other and I'm holding a posture just say like this or whatever, round, we call this shape round, yeah? The concave of the chest and the arms. You'll see this when we're doing our Qi Gong, right? This is round. This is the first shape. So anytime that your shoulders are parallel with and in front, some styles shape up like this. There's nothing wrong with that. You can fire on both arms and both legs, yeah? Um, but each of these three uh, body postures counter each other. So when you're watching a person spar or you know if you're playing around with someone or if you're going to fight, the way they stand, you can also counter them by a certain posture. Okay, so the first one, round. Yeah, is a round. The next one, if, I, if the person's round, to 
because his arms are just uh, like this, and that's as far as they go, I'm going to switch my, my posture to oval, which is like that, yeah? So one arm is longer and like that, yeah? So you can see it now becomes an oval shape, yeah? So round, oval. So if a person throws a punch, I go oval. And I've already beat him in the length of my movement and counted him in one strike. If a person's in the, in the oval shape like this, I'll go into thin. Yeah, and that's why when you learn your, uh, when, you, when you do your qigong in a horse stance, and you'll see parts of the form that moves and you're in thin shape. Okay, so there's parts where you're round, oval, and thin. These are called the three body shapes of the burning palm. They're found in probably every martial arts school, although they don't understand them that much, okay? They just think of, well, they're doing a form and they're just moving, but each, uh, each of these circles can counter each other. So it's up to you to fully understand this theory, play around when you, you know, doing your, your, uh, your spider weaving its web, you know, the, uh, which we call the sensitivity part of the burning palm. And uh, three circles of the body. At the same time, don't forget your uh, three points of the body that never go past the knee and the toe. You don't want your head leaning forward. Okay, it's in line with the center line like that. Okay, so if I'm round, center. My head's still center, and like this, yeah? So that's the three circles, or three body shapes. Round, oval, and thin. Okay, if a person uh, comes at me and he, he becomes oval, right? If I'm circle, like this, I may not be able to get him. Yeah, because he's already shifted his uh, center line off. I, I haven't got the reach like he does, so I go into, say, him up, horse stance, and I can still get that shot in, yeah, whatever you're going to be using. So counter each posture, just in the body posture with these three circles, you can also win a fight by just being aware of the way the person shapes up and how he's going to attack. Okay, so full strategy, in the burning palm, don't just think that what we're doing when we're doing our meditations, we're just moving, we're changing body shapes at the same time. So that's the, um, the Psalm New Gong. Okay, let's move on now to our stances, the tiger stance, or what we call full bowl. Start with your feet together. Find your equilibrium. Step out forward. Enough that when you step forward, that this heel comes off the ground, yeah? And that is your stance. You don't want too long. The foot on the, the foot flat at the back is not how we do things with our striking techniques. We keep our feet, our heel off the ground because we want to be able to pivot and move very quickly Keeping it flat-footed is a little bit too slow for fighting, yeah? When we do our qigong, we also keep our feet flat. Okay, there's two different reasons for that, and I'll break that down a little bit later, or possibly in the, the qigong section of our DVDs. So, you be uh, feet together, find your center, step forward, the foot, the heel will come off the ground, you still keep keep all your body weight, your spine relaxed. Keep uh, put all the weight on your on your glutes and your thighs. Okay. When if you've been doing your fubo training, one to tens, you'll notice that your legs will burn out, and uh, there's nothing better for your uh, explosive training than doing the fubo stepping. Okay. It's a linear step, which means we're going forward or backwards, okay? Our off center, our, our, our off balance points is to the left and to the right. But we'll keep in mind that that is our off center, that's, that's our off balance is left and right, okay? So if we're fighting someone 
and he shifts his weight or steps out there, I quickly regain my my centre line with him. I don't stand there and go and face the person. If he steps off on that angle, I full step, yeah, and I've now I've regained my centre. I can um, because we're doing the full bow, we're going full stepping, full up, uh, half step forward and full step forward. But as well, we have another pattern called the seven star stepping, which we'll, we'll break down a little bit later. But get your stance, your feet together, step forward, and your toes will be uh, on the ground, the balls of your feet, and that will keep your legs and your, everything springy in your uh, tendons because we're activating the toes. The toes connect all the tendons of your legs. And, um, and your Achilles tendon will start to build that power through your calf muscles. Now, with the Fubo, as you, you always want to keep this front foot on a slight 45. Remember your center line. Don't uh, have your uh, gua open unless you're going to be changing your, your shape. Now, Depending on how you like to fight, you may use you may be great at keeping your side type of stance, but there's a flaws in that if you're going to start in a horse stance facing your opponent because you're going to get the crap kicked out of your legs if you're too slow in your stepping. So if you start with your your food bow and develop that you will be very explosive and then you can drop into the horse and fire away a good solid punch. The center line's always covered in Fubo and uh, if you think of a tiger, you know, or any of the, the, the cat species, they don't walk flat footed, they're actually on their toe. So this is why this system uses the name Fubo but may use it, Yalkum would also use Fubo, but it's a traditional feet flat, and you've got the butt in, butt butt no, which is the figure eight. We have the figure eight, but we're not calling it the figure eight, we're just calling it the tiger stepping. And when you're, when you're doing the, the Fubo, you want to be able to become that tiger, yeah? So if you're lazy, I don't think there's a lazy tiger unless it's eaten and it's sleeping, but if you're just going, uh, 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 and stepping like that, you're not going to gain the benefits of this stance or the stepping. You need to be explosive. Um, you need to get into the character of a tiger. And in the burning palm, we call the, the legs the tiger and the upper body is the dragon, which is soft and loose. Okay, so therefore, this is our chemical uh, in Taoism and at Shaolin they have the, the ti white tiger and the, the dragon as well as part of its um, understanding of connecting the body. The earth would be the, the uh, tiger and the heaven is the dragon, yeah? So, keep in mind that when you are stepping, your upper body is totally relaxed. That's why we're at the Song Tang Ging. The tension comes up and it's relaxed and it comes out. So that's the uh, the full bowl breakdown. We'll be doing the stepping as well, but uh, keep in mind what is it? Your three your three points: toes, knees, and nose for the center line. And. Uh, also keep in mind that when you're doing your bag work or your sparring, your three body shapes. Okay, so that's the uh, Fubo breakdown for the stance. When training your stepping, your bag work and uh, sparring or anything like that, always keep your hands up. Now, we talk about gates on the body. We've got the lower, middle, an upper gate, which we call the Samun, right? Three, three gate method. Now, when you're when you're sparring, 
people are going to be punching, you're going to be countering with your hands. And what I do is uh, sometimes I'll drop a hand. As long as I know that if I drop this hand, I'm giving the person free reign for a strike. Yeah? So when I drop this hand like that, I know that he's either going to kick me or punch me or try and set up to come through. So automatically, when I put my hand down and I'm relaxed like this, I'm giving the guy free reign to come in. I also can be from here and drop this side, and that way I can trick him to come in through here. Yeah? I can also open up my body, allowing the person to come in. Okay? So anytime that I'm, I'm moving around like this, I can drop, open, and stuff like that, and I might trick that person to come in, and then I've already counted him because I know that what I want to do, if I've, opened, if I've left this side open, then I'm already thinking of uh, a counter for that. Okay? So the theories and everything that you're doing is all about mental, uh, a mental state of setting up your opponent. I don't have to attack. I can let my hand or my guard drop knowing that I've actually set him up. Okay? So that's another theory for the burning palm. When you're doing your stepping pattern, just as a, an exercise, just keep your hands up. Okay? Because you want to train the energy and the muscles in those arms to keep that hand up at all times. Get into a routine and uh, don't get too lazy. Don't just walk around doing your stepping like this. Okay? I want you to keep those hands up. Um, it's, it's easier to block when your hands are up here, down, out, whatever you want to do. But um, if your hands are down and you're lazy, the time someone punches, you get, it's too slow. You're not going to be able to block or trap or do anything. Okay, so that's the um, a little bit of theory about uh, your bridge. You have an open guard, closed guard, dropping your arm like this. Okay, so there you go. That's the um, uh, bridge hands and uh, keeping your guard, setting up your opponent. Alright guys, now we're going to be doing the gong lick training, which is the uh, power and strength training methods for the burning palm. This is found in other various systems as well, so uh, you'll be able to uh, figure it out yourselves. Lick means force or power or strength, the gong is the method. So where when you're training Kung Fu, you need to have your, your strong strength and uh, endurance training along with your forms, weapons, qigong, they both work together. You can't have one without the other and if you want to be good at your burning palm system, don't ever leave out your gong lick training. So uh, you're going to have to use uh, a stack of tita jiao. Remember, uh, you'll need to have a lot of it because uh, the bag training as well that's involved and all the other devices, uh, you're going to have to use it for the bruising and uh, and helping the muscles relax and uh, develop. On top of that, you'd need to get yourself some burning palm oil for massage and uh, the tonic, yeah, for the drinking, for the health as well as uh, the injuries from the inside. What the what the tip dar gel does for the external is we're going from the outside to in. When you drink the internal tita, you're actually healing from the inside out. So again, there's a yin yang factor happening right there. The massage oil, after you've uh, used the tita and your muscles are sore, get into it with the oil and massage. You want to look after your body, look after your hands. Therefore, you can keep training more and more. If uh, if you don't use it, uh, I assure you that. Uh, your training will suffer slightly because it takes a little bit longer for the injuries to subside and heal. Alright, so the first thing is we're going to train the claw bag. Hello, Daddy. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to have to get yourself a claw bag. This has got steel ball bearings and it's bigger than my palm and it weighs about 5-6 kilos. 
you can go heavier if you want but it's not about being heavier, it's about doing the repetition. Again, everything's 108 in the burning palm system, so uh, there's uh, lots of repetition, so you're gonna get the endurance and the strength through the, that type of method. Okay, start in the horse stance. You're just gonna throw it up and catch it. And when you catch it, you wanna squeeze the bag and use your rib muscles like this and pull in as if you're going to tear so you're going to as you go out then pull in like this so you're snatching and grabbing this is part of the the homogel the red dragon claw in our system we don't use the, the tiger claw, we call it the red dragon claw, yeah? So, anyway, same, same, yeah? So you're gonna throw it up, so therefore you're kind of like doing a curl, grab, like this. And then you grab, tear, and come back to your curl, like this. And again, you're gonna do 108, rub the jowl on. You can also, this way, 108, okay, but throwing it up and catching, you're working the deltoids, yeah? You don't usually catch people down here, all right? So all your muscle groups for the pecs, the throat, the arm, these are the ones you want. You're not grabbing people unless you're fighting a midget. So 108 reps of that every day. Rub your tithar gel in. Also do your tonic and your uh, massage oil. Then you get your roller bar. So we're working from the fingertips and uh, now we're working the bridge. Now I've got stacks on uh, YouTube on the roller bar. So uh, you can look at that as well. I'm just going to go through this quickly. You're going to start with your hands in the prayer position. Now this is meditative, and what, you, what we're trying to find is that rolling inside the, the roller bar, that vibration is moving. As you roll on the outside, the inside's moving, and that vibration is what we want to try and feel and, and connect to. It's not about just rolling the arm for conditioning. It will condition anyway but we're after sensitizing the nerves and the arms. And at the same time, the, the amount of times you roll is for your punch. And you're gonna build a lot of power in the shoulders, the back and the lats as you're rolling. And of course, you wanna connect with your dantian and your core. Use your legs that when you're, when you're coming down, you're kind of like a wave action, yeah? Like this. So you get your uh, rise and fall, swallow and spitting action, or the fao chum tong tol. Now, don't ever leave this out. A lot of, I've had a lot of people email me saying, oh, what's the use in it? It's old school training. This is what Grandmaster Duway would call the unstoppable punch. Because this is constantly on your arm pressing down, you're going to build the chi and the muscle groups that no one can block your arm so you can power through yeah someone's bridge so anyone that touches or tries to block you should have that strength in that arm when you're committed to hit through anyway saving mark four stance and then your arms going to open up to shoulder width and then you're going to drop down and roll and then it's going to come up To. You may not be able to do that in the beginning, but you want to work up to that. Remember, it's the reps that we want, the meditative part of it of rolling the bar up and down. <coughs> and then we've got the 
the Heigong to go with it. It's the same exercise. You're going to take three breaths. And then you're slowly going to pull your hands apart. But you want to feel the chi between the hands. As if they're propelling each other away. And then we're going, you know, you're going to go down. And you're going to circle in an anti-clockwise towards yourself, yeah? Breathing in, half circle, breathing out. Keeping the loud boom points at all times facing each other, your toes are gripping the ground up, will open up the, the kidney one point in the feet and allow the energy to move through the body. Tongue is always touching the roof of the mouth. So after you've done this here, this is very good for your health as well and especially after doing the exercise with the roller bar, it moves the chi through uh, without the weight and allows your uh, uh, energy to move better at the same time uh, heals any injuries to the nervous system. So you've, after you've done your three breaths to start, you open your hands up, you feel the chi ball in the hands, and you keep that chi ball and you're rolling like this. Breathing in, half circle, breathing out. Breathing in, half circle, breathing out. Like that, yeah? Yeah, so from here, you uh, breathing in, Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Yeah? And after you've done 108 of them, you'll come up to here and you'll hold the ball. And then you're going to push that ball together. You're going to feel as if it's a magnetic energy forcing that in. And that's done nice and slow. The whole set. It's done nice and slow, and this is just a great qigong for your breathing. This will get you to understand how to learn to rise and fall, especially when you start to uh, doing your exercise, uh, you're striking that. Okay, so this is all going to help your uh, delivery system. After you've done to here, you're going to take three breaths to come out and just relax. So that's the roller bar and the roller bar chi gong. Remember to check my YouTube page and you'll be able to see more exercises where I'm seated as well. Another exercise for the roller bar for the bottom of the forearm. Is you put the roller bar on uh, two chairs so you got the middle part. <coughs> Now, you're just going to roll your forearm, pressing on it, yeah? And up to you how much pressure you put on it, but you want to give it a little bit of pressure. Then after you've done just the, the bottom of the bone, now you want to roll back and then the, the meaty part of your forearm. Then roll back, palms up. So now we've done the top, the meaty part, and the bottom, we're getting the whole lot in. After you go roll this way, and then back here, then you change it. So you got your uh, palms up, forward, and then pull back. Palms down, I mean palms up, going forward, pull back. Palms up, pull back. So you got like tons out, yeah, or tune kill. Then come back here. So this is all what you do with your, your trapping and your blocking and your jerking motion here. Okay, so this is on top of the, someone's bridge. Yeah, coming through, then you can pull back. All right, so you can, of course you can then start punching at 
like this to get your your hard harder conditioning if you want to. Start with this, this is your level one anyway. Later on we'll get into the next DVD of level two and I'll show you more exercises using the roll bar. Now, this exercise is called the, uh, the dragon chasing the pearl. In the Indian tradition, they call it the mace. Now, this is an actual, this used to be a weapon of, as well for some of the gods. If you go into Zeus and, uh, and Hindu religion, even the thunder god in uh, Taoism use a hammer. These are all similar to a mace. Uh, they all use it as a weapon to destroy evil and uh, this, this will actually condition your, your body different. Now we're actually working on the shoulders, back, the wrist, the whole arm. So we've gone from the claw bag which is the fingers and working other parts but it's primarily for the grabbing. Now we're, then the roller bars for the bridge and part of the shoulder. Now we're going to work the whole back and, and now, uh, first exercise. Now, depending on how strong you are, uh, again, 108 of everything. So a little bit uh, anal about 108, but uh, this is uh, all the training that you'll use on top of your bag and all your pad work that will make your level one so powerful. Uh, you should always Make, you can actually buy yourself a mace if you have to, or make it yourself with weights, whatever you want. Um, one of my students in Portugal got himself a, a, a shot put ball and a steel bar and had a welder to weld it on. <coughs> so this weighs probably about uh, 8 kilos all up, so about 16 pounds or something like that. Now. Fao uh, or tongue toll is your uh, expanding and contraction, which gives you your power from your hum hum butt boy, your shoulders, and swelling the chest to releasing your force out. Okay, and this is the first exercise. You're going to hold the at the end like that, and the right hand on top, and then you're going to change the opposite way. Same thing, Mar again. Okay, you're going to hold the bar out. This is punching at your heart level. This is going to give you a straight punch and you want to squeeze as you go. You're going to bring in like this and you're going to swallow the body and then you're out. Breathe in. Two. Three. And see how as I bring in, my elbows are, are flexing out because I want to concave the back and learn to train the spine from here and then I straighten up everything and I turn and I, my wrist is squeezing, yeah? So I go pop out. And this is also a double phoenix eye strike in our system for attacking the DIMAC points. So this, that's the first exercise for develop, developing the tongue toll. Yeah, the swallow and spitting, or the contracting and expanding action. The next one, this is a little bit harder and it will work your wrist a little bit, but it's going to give you a lot of strength in your, in your hands and wrist and forearm for your china or your kambasa, right? Kambasa means you're, you're grabbing and tearing action. So you're going to hold it out like this in front of you. And then you're going to drop it, but you want to keep it level, like that, yeah, and then up. Again, I'm using my forearm, and if I've got someone's arm here, my claw and wrist, I'm going to try and break that by forcing and twisting and, and, and using the commercial technique to grab and twist the joint and dislocate. 
It's our 100 native dam. Lastly, for your strong bridge, poor stance, again, and you want to hold this out, you can have your hand on your hip or here in case you drop it, you don't want to whack yourself, yeah? So you'll be like that. And you want to work up to 108 breaths. Don't know if you can see that. And this will work on your stabilizer muscles in your shoulders, your arms, your whole body, and work your breath because the strength in that and all the energy you're using, you're going to get tired. So again, you want to work up to 108 breaths. <clears throat> get your saping bar again. And feel your balance by holding that. Always pay attention, look at the ball in case you get tired and it's going to fall onto your head. And find where your center of gravity is because um, if it does shift, you need to quickly move. And this will also, if someone's touching your bridge and he moves, you've got that quick response. So this is working not just your muscle groups, all these exercises is helping you become a better fighter, sensitizing your body, working all the, uh, the nerves and uh, making your nerve force more responsive. Okay, so these are the exercises for level one and uh, never miss a day on these. Always use your tip dar gel. Remember I said the tonic for your health, that will help your kidney chi and your blood, and that will move the blood. And if it's moving the blood, the chi moves with the blood. <coughs> so you're healing from the inside out. The chitta gel is from the outside in. It conditions the muscles, the bones, the ligaments, the whole, the whole lot. Any bruising as well, it helps it move the chi and blood and remove the stagnation of that. At the end, you want to use the chitta oil, the chitta yao, and uh, massage your body and uh, find any sore spots and really get into it because uh, the jowl is an oil base and therefore you can massage in after you use the tip up. I also make uh, a burning palm body scrub using all organic products uh, using the tip da yao combined with uh, all these organic products. So when, after you've uh, had a good workout in the shower you massage yourself, scrub yourself clean, and that will help you with the healing and make your body nice, uh, the, the actual skin soft, and help with any healing afterwards, especially if you're gonna go to bed, you're gonna feel really good. So you can also buy that from myself. Uh, a lot of students use it. I've got now people, massage therapists, uh, using all, our, uh, all the Burning Palm products. So that's the uh, Gunglik training. The Tita Tita Yao, the tonic, the, the body scrub, all should be part of your burning palm training. Okay, we're at the bag section now for the conditioning for the Song Tan game. There's five, what we call the five shadows, which is five hand strikes, and you'll be doing all your strikes from your your tiger stance or your full bolt. Now, each strike will contain a certain way to release the power. I'm going to be breaking it down on the bag. Now, when you're doing the bag, this is quite heavy, so you might be able to move it so much. And that's not what it's about in the beginning. You want to actually work up to moving it. But how we strike it in the beginning is different to just flat out trying to smash it. Okay, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is condition the hand, learn the proper technique first. There's no need to just go ahead and think that you're smashing away until you actually build up on it. Because each strike we're going to do 108 reps. Um, you can do it uh, sing in singles, which is the, like, just say for instance, we do the sun punch here. 
yeah, the, the, or the vertical fist, right? You, you do that 108 times. You can work that 108 times, or you can do 54 on one leg, and then you can do 54 on the other leg, yeah? Um, when, when you're striking, you want to be able to be totally relaxed and, and allow the technique to actually penetrate the bag without trying to smash it forward and, and make it go too far away. Um, you don't have to go fast because when we start doing the pad workout and all that on the next DVD, that's when the person's putting the pads up and then you're moving and then you're releasing the power differently. This is more about the conditioning in the beginning and then once you learn to uh, understand the technique properly and the structure, then you start going a little bit harder and adding a little, a little bit more force. I'm going to do it as if uh, I'm teaching a beginner and um, there's no need to go so hard in the beginning because your hands will get sore. Always use the tita jiao. As soon as you start feeling that it's getting red and sore, stop. Remember 108 is only a number that you want to get up to. So if you've got uh, five techniques on one hand, you're doing, uh, you're doing over 500 hand strikes for that bag on one hand and 500 on the other. So that's a lot of striking on a, on a bag that's quite dense. All right, you don't want to uh, destroy your hands. That's not what we're about because we also need our hands for healing, which I consider the most important part of this system. So there's five, uh, five hand techniques. The first one is, we'll start with the right, hand, uh, right leg forward. Okay, you can do left leg forward as well. That is completely up to you. Remember, we're even out both sides. So when you're doing the bag, you want to do left leg, right leg, rear hand, uh, lead hand. Now, uh, the first one, just like we're doing the tongue toll with the dragon chasing the pearl, this is coming from the, the center out. We're not just here. Okay, so on, when, you, when you strike that bag, use your shoulder and use the circle and compress the dantian on impact. So it'd be like one. Yeah? See how it comes from here and out. One. And what you want to try and find is when I'm prep when I'm doing this that I've got speed and I've got not so much tension, even though you're gonna feel there's tension in the beginning, but that spring is when you come out and relax again. Okay, you're not trying to go like that. That's not the sung tonguing. Sung tongue is the soft springy force. So you have to find that within yourself when you're doing the techniques. Okay, so one. And it's coming from the center out. Yeah? Okay, so that's the first one. Again, you have your tita jiao on <clears throat> and you'll be shaping up to the bag. Now you can use your rear hand the trap or the lead hand when you're doing the technique. I want you to get used to trap and hit, trap and hit just while you're doing the bag work. Um, and then you can do repetition as you get better of course. Okay, but this is to, this is, the other hand is also helping the other hand to move. So your hands are up, we'll use the lead hand, okay. And I'm not going hard. And see how I'm dropping my power like this. And when I start getting harder at it, I go in and I go use the shock and the spring that, that comes from that. But in the beginning, I just want you to condition. Like get your whole circle happening. And then later on, you can be back here, moving in. Like that, and moving, and you can put it all together. So, uh, now the, the uh, rear hand, hands are up. Okay, 
See how I'm, I'm clearing and striking through here? And so forth. And you do your left leg and you do it this way. Yeah? Just break it down quickly for you. Because it's going to take up too, long, too much time. Okay, so it'll be this way. Dropping my power, using my ribs, my shoulder, the hip. So that's the first of the um, the sun punch. After your sun punch, at this this uh, left hand comes underneath, and we come in with a hammer fist. This is called German Guan Dagu which is the uh, general beating the drum. Now, when you're doing drumming, you see this happening in the Kung Fu, the drumming there. So the drum can be short or it can be big, yeah? So in the beginning, let's just start with uh, keeping it relaxed again. Now, there's a couple of ways to train it on the bag. Keep in your, your stance or you can keep Stand in front of the bag and just twist for the conditioning. I'm going to show a little bit of both. So, one, and the other hand is going to help the other. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, twisting and contracting the dantian. When I hit, I'm going to try and cut through it, and so you get the penetration. I'll do it on this side. So I'm totally relaxed, and then I hit. I'll do it from the in front of here, so you just twist it. So sometimes you haven't got time to prepare for a fighting stance, but here I can twist and use my hammers if someone's coming through. And see how I'm keeping one up? This one can block any punch coming through. Here. So I'm using the kinematics of the body, twisting the stance at the same time. 108 of them. You can play the drum this way, or you can use rear hand. Other hands help on the other. So left and right leg, 108 each side, each hand. So you're doing a stack of uh, conditioning. So that's the general beating the drum. After you've beat the drum, you're going to trap, this hand rolls over into a gua choy. Yeah, it's a rolling hand or, or a rolling back fist. And this is kind of used for chopping as well as smashing and moving things out the way. Points you'd use is on the head, the face, the nose, the chin, the jaw, the ear. <clears throat> so after I've gone from the German double here, this hand's going to roll over cut down and I'm going to use a circle and sink in and see how I'm totally relaxed if I go fast yeah. and you can use after you start getting good at your, your training you uh, can uh, you add it all together, which I'll show you at the end. So, left and right side again. You can go like this.
So that's the 108 each leg, each side of course. Use your tip dart jowl because you're going to need it. You're going to be sore. And remember, work up to 108. You may only get to do 30, 20, I don't care. But you want to work up to that. It's going to take a bit of time. Um, so don't just go overboard and destroy your hands. After your gua choy, you pull back, gun jo, right? Yang palm. <clears throat> I've come over, rolling back fist, crushed, palm. Yeah? One, like this, two, and I want to spit because I contract and expand. One, two, yeah? One, two, one. Two, one, two. Okay. And the other side. One, two, three. And as then after that, you can just stand there. That will be coming over the top, you know, like this. So it's hidden. Again, relaxed. And use your circles, yeah, in and sink. Okay, so left leg, right leg, rear hand, lead, excuse me, lead hand. And that's the Yang Zhou, the yin, uh, Yang Palm. After you go Yang Zhou, then again, this is going to roll over into a Yin Zhou, the back of the palm. Just like the rolling back fist, but we're going to use the, um, the back of the palm, and this is just going to be a totally relaxed hand. Okay, so after I've got one, like this, yeah? One. See how it, you can hear the penetration just relaxed. So my body's sinking, it's yin, so it's going to penetrate there. Yeah? And you do the other side. Hitting down. The reason for the bag being round is because if it was straight, I couldn't get my hammer fist to come down on the 45. I couldn't get my hand to come down on, on the vertical uh, part, uh, path down. Okay, so uh, when, when you get a normal punching bag or a boxer, which is good for the fist like that and hooks, this works so much better and that's why it's designed like this for the brain palm. So you've got left leg, right leg. You, you can also do it this way, yeah? So one. Yeah. yeah, so you can play around with it. Remember, just take it easy, totally relax the hand and use Try and connect your tendons, relax the body, and get and let the hands condition. Try not to be trying to force everything. Some time, yeah? Relax, springy, power. When you hit, it comes back, yeah? And then it springs to the next one. So that's the, uh, the five shadows. Now I'm gonna uh, connect the whole five, and you can do that as a complete set. Okay, so that'll be the, the next stage. So here we go. One, two, roll, spit, roll. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, yeah? One, two, three. Four, five, 
that'd be classed as one set. Yeah, so if you're doing your whole 108, if in the beginning I want you to try and do singles 108, and then the whole five linked as 108, each hand, each side. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And see how the other hand's always helping the other hand. Okay, so that's all you need to do on the bag. And then we do the peg work with a partner and you get your time and distance and you've got someone feeding you the, the pads. Okay, so that's the Song Tan Gang, level one bag. All you need to do to condition the hands and as you get better and better, you start adding the power. Like I said, use plenty of tic gel if you haven't got any. Um, or if you've got your own but you want to do the correct training, do it with the burning palm tic the oil, the scrub, and the tonic, and that will give you a complete system for training.